Today we're going to be talking about curses. I mean, this is a powerful subject because so many of us have been either afraid of curses because they might come through something we say unintentionally, or we're afraid of witchcraft, or we don't even think about it at all. We're like, ah, oh, that's just all hooey pooey. You know, it's not real. I've never said that word hooey pooey before. I'm very impressed with it. Well, today <laughs> I'm going to talk about curses. I'm going to tell you one story first. I remember sitting down with this man and he was having a real problem in life. He had some real dark oh, thoughts. And then he also problem. was having a problem with his career as an actor, a very prolific actor that you might even know his name. I'm not going to say it because that part is his story to tell. And we were praying together and I said, I feel like I have uh, kind of a word or a discernment for you. And he said, well, tell me what it is. And I said, I, I see you sitting at your desk and you open your desk drawer and under this pile, you look at these two newspaper clippings and one is about your father and one is about like a review of a movie or something or a review of something you've done. And God is saying that both of those are not true. And I don't know what that, it doesn't make sense to me because why wouldn't it be true about your father? And why would it, I don't know, but he's saying both of those aren't true. They're not my truth for you. I actually have a higher truth. And what happened with your father is not your destiny. And what this reviewer is saying is not your destiny. And he just starts breaking into tears. His wife's sitting next to him. She's never heard this before. And he said, every day that I'm at home, I go into my office and I open my drawer and I look at these two articles. It's my father's obituary who had killed himself. And the second one was the, the first review I ever had of a major motion picture I was very proud of. And this reviewer just cut me down and said I would never amount to anything. And I look at these and I think these are my truth. They said, I know I shouldn't. As a human being, I know this isn't true, but this has become my curse. This has become, I said, do you believe now that God wants to release you from believing these oppressive thoughts or allowing this to be your personal truth? Man, he was like, absolutely. And we prayed and we just said, God, break these lies and bring your truth. And as we did, I mean, he just had like wash over him the spirit of truth who is God. Who, to tell him like your lot in life is not to commit suicide like your father. As a matter of fact, they gave him a word that said whatever was in the article was a lie and your mom knows the truth. His mom told him your father never meant to kill himself. It was a hunting accident. He was polishing some guns for a, uh, he was gonna go take hunting and, he, and, and one went off in his face. And so everyone just said it was a suicide. But she said, I, I can guarantee you he wasn't suicidal at that point in his life, but because he had struggled with suicide before, everybody just assumed that's what it was. So for the first time in his life, he believes that his father didn't commit suicide. Now, this is the power of things that we believe that can become a curse for us. And I'm going to define curse. It says in the Webster Dictionary, curse is defined as a solemn utterance to invoke a supernatural power to inflict harm or punishment on someone or something. In a less formal sense, it's just considered to be an expression of what of wishing misfortune, evil, or doom to befall a person, place, or group of people or a thing. And we think of them as formal spells, or we think somebody's, you know, do it has a big black cauldron and is putting stuff inside of it, or that somebody's doing incantations. But the reality is, is that words are powerful. Your words carry a lot of power to them. Your belief system carries a lot of power when you declare something and speak it out. Let me read you some scriptures. The first one is Matthew 5, 22. But I say, even if you're angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, you're in danger of being brought before the court. If you curse someone, you're in danger of the fires of hell. Proverbs 18, 21 is an even more prolific verse. This is death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruit. The good news is when Jesus died on the cross, he took curses from you. But there's a process in our life that people will speak things over you throughout your life that you have to now put a wall up in your spirit or you have to reject or refute, even from teachers and parents. Sometimes people don't see you after God's heart. They see you in a limitation of maybe some truth that is obvious. Like I was terrible at grammar growing up and spelling. So I had English teacher after English teacher. I would work really hard, I'd still get A's, but they would say you would never do something in the literary field or as a writer. And that was one of my primary passions. I've now been a best-selling author, but they didn't see it. So there's times where I'd go, I'm not worth you know, investing into this kind of writing gift. I, 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 this is never going to happen for me. And I came to agreement with their spoken words or declarations over me. And it became like a curse that at one point God had to identify and say, I've given you the ability to write. I want you to write. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is from you. Who cares what my limitations are and what they say? Because as a Christian, God can use everything for his good. And he loves to show his strength and our weakness. So sometimes you're even weak in an area and God's like, that's what qualifies you. And that's important to know as a Christian because sometimes people will speak things over you that limit you. I remember sitting with one lady and her mom had told her her whole life, you know, she said, I want to be an artist, I want to be an artist. Her mom had told her whole life, no, you should be a teacher and then do art on the side because teaching is more practical. And years later, she'd forgotten all about it. She's now in her, you know, mid to late 40s. And we're sitting down and praying. She felt like she was very stuck in life and she didn't like her career. She didn't like her life. She didn't like where she lived. And so she said, can you pray with me? So we sit down. It's one of my family friends. And we sit down and I start to pray with her. And I said, I just feel like you're not 
you're not being true to who you're calling is, like what you're calling is and who you're called to love. Like, what is your calling? And she goes, I'm a teacher. I said, no, 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 what in the foundation of who you were from the time you were little, what did you dream of? And she goes, I don't know. And she starts praying. She goes, well, I always wanted to be an artist, but that can't be real. I said, why can't that be real? She starts to tell us the conversations where her mom told her, you cannot make money being an artist. You cannot be an artist, all these things. So now she's in her late forties and she's been formed by the spiritual perspective. That's a natural and spiritual perspective. She broke it off of her life just through the power of Jesus. And she's now a full time artist. <laughs> Another story, I went into a church and I was in the worship time. I'd never been there before. It was a Hispanic church, like a Latin American church. And I went over with the pastors. It was during worship time. I look across the room and the pastor goes, isn't this a beautiful group of people? I said, absolutely. I said, who is that woman right there dressed all in white? And he goes, that woman, she's our lead intercessor. And I said, she's a witch. She's literally witch, practicing witchcraft against you and your wife. She's cursing you and she's praying spiritual prayers and probably doing it ritualistically to take you guys out. And he goes, no, she's, she's for us. She's the one I go to for everything. And I said, no, no, no. She doesn't have Jesus as the center of her prayer life. And I said, maybe I'm being judgmental. We need to ask her some questions. So they ended up having a meeting with her with some elders and they asked some questions. And basically she admitted to the fact that when the pastor, he had a second wife because his first wife died. When he took on his second wife, she didn't feel it was from God. And she'd been praying every day for their divorce that she'd been praying that she would be dismantled in the church. When the woman started a women's ministry, the pastor's wife started a women's ministry, she was praying that it would fail. And the pastor and his wife were just sitting there listening to this going, oh my gosh, we feel like there's a, like a, a spin of energy around all the good things we're trying to do on, on our marriage. Like if we have a little bit of a, you know, uh, argument, it turns into a big fight and it feels like demonic energy, not real. And you have this woman, she said she prayed every day, multiple times a day against them. Can you imagine that? And there's people who are just in the wrong spirit and somebody's in the wrong mind and they begin to use declaration and move things in the spirit towards you. And all you have to do is love. All you have to do is believe what God says and also have discernment, ask him for discernment. Now you don't have to be afraid of people who are against you. I'm sure there's many people who are like, I hate Sean Bowles and I think he's a false prophet and blah, 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 blah. blah, blah, blah. That's not what I'm saying about cursing. There's people who though, who might have power in my life or I might, it might be in the structure of my life who have the wrong theology, right, wrong understanding and wrong heart towards me. And those are the people that when you allow that to come into your camp, you allow it to come into your life, you're allowing something that's wrong in your life and you have to start to discern those things so you can cut off either the wrong perception. It doesn't always cut off the relationship. Sometimes the person can be healed or come into right mindedness. I mean, like that woman who's an artist, her mom is not a bad person. She just didn't have a, a good philosophy of life and pursuing your dreams. And so she spoke what was her truth over her daughter, which was a curse. So who can curse? Any of us can curse. It says in James 3, 9, and 10, it says, with our tongue, we bless the Lord our Father, and with it, we curse people who are made in the likeness of God. From the same mouth, we bring blessing or cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. So in other words, so, you know, people might say things like, you will never be successful. You were born to have this disease. It was just gonna be in you because it's generational, or you won't be able to have children. You're not as good as this person. Like you're not as good as your brother or your sister or your mother. You might've had that when you're growing up. Like, why couldn't you be like your sister? That kind of thing is terrible. I might as well die. That could be a big one. You are better off dead. I remember having this thought that I was going to die in my 30s. From the time I was in my 20s, I thought, I'm going to die in my 30s, and that's okay. And I got into my 30s, and, and uh, I started, literally, I got a parasite, and I was actively dying. And I thought, well, this is my lot in life. And this woman came and told me, she goes, I feel like you believe something. And it came from some conversations I had had in my youth about martyrdom and some weird religious stuff. And she goes, I feel like you've had that conversation, some belief in your heart that you're gonna die. And God is saying you're gonna have a long life, but you have to come into agreement with it. And that set me up for the healing power of God to come over the sickness that I had that some of you have watched a video upon, uh, about in the past. Now, even unrevealed curses can have an effect. And this is important. Matthew 15, 18 and 19 says, for from the heart come evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, and lying and slander. Ecclesiastes 10, 20, when you marry that together, curse not the king, no, not in your thought, curse not the rich in your bedchamber, for a bird of the air shall carry the voice, and that which has wings shall tell the matter. In other words, if you allow your heart to believe something about somebody, you're not in agreement with the Spirit of God. So what are you in agreement with? The enemy who has an agenda of evil towards everybody. And if you can empower that inside of you, like through your bitterness or resentment to actually curse somebody and speak something out against somebody, man, like what is your mouth for? It's for the glory of God. It's to bring blessing and the Bible's filled with blessing. There's over 300 spoken blessings in the Old and New Testament. And God 
gave us the power to bless or come to agreement and speak out and declare what his will is and what his intention is and what we're supposed to have in our lives. I love everything from the Old Testament to the New Testament, but John 10, 10, when Jesus says, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come to give you life and what? Life abundantly. This is who God is. And so whenever there's something in your life that's going on where it feels like it's the opposite or it doesn't feel full of God, it doesn't feel full of grace, you're called to speak the blessing of God. And it doesn't mean you're cursed every time. Sometimes it just means that you need tools, you need, you need help, you need relationships, whatever, to help you overcome an area. But when you have a spirit of cursing against you, it's something that comes up over and over and over and over. One of the main ways you could stand is blessed by speaking out and releasing. If you think curses are powerful, you better know that the blessing of heaven is so powerful that it will, it will establish your feet. It will establish your foundation. It will give you a firm foundation and who God is, which cannot be shaken according to Hebrews 12. Now I'll also say this, if you've cursed somebody unintentionally, or if you've said some things over people's lives or destinies, your children, your spouse, someone else, it's really important to repent. It's really important to repent to them. And it's also important to repent to God because that breaks the cycle of curses. It's like broken when you repent. You say, man, I thought this about you for so many years. And I've said this about you so many times. I've seen husbands do this with, with their wives. Where like, I've just thought you were controlling. I've called you controlling and I've cursed you to be controlling. And really it's because I haven't been an equal partner in a lot of areas in our lives. And so you've had to manage me and micromanage me because I haven't come to the plate. And so I've cursed you. And I, I, I now repent of that curse and say, I will be with you and I will stand with you in our life. And it changes everything. We watch this happen over and over as we lead through people through personal prayer. So I'm going to encourage you to reverse this thing. If you feel cursed, look at what the opposite of cursing would be in that situation and then declare it, call it forth. If you feel like somebody specifically has been praying against you or using witchcraft against you, here's the good news. Who's greater? God and you or them over you. God is always greater. And so a lot of these curses can be broken just by simply praying, identifying where it's coming from, praying. I say no more, you're not part of my life. And God can do something in their lives and you can release them, but you can also have the empowerment of what this thing was trying to block come off of you. And I remember at one point, I had a person who was really you know, jealous over me and, and was praying some really strong prayers that basically taking me out of ministry so they could have my place. And I could feel weird stuff, not just from them, but I could feel weird stuff like, I just felt aggravation a lot when I was at church or when I was in the positions that they wanted. I could feel an aggravation, like I couldn't settle. I couldn't feel great about what I was doing. And at one point, this prophetic lady came to me and she said, there's a spirit of jealousy that's cursing you and we break it. When we broke it, this person actually fell sick and they'd been praying that it'd be taken out by sickness. They fell sick. They called up the pastor, the senior pastor from the church or the associate senior pastor, and they told him what they'd been doing. And then we went in and I released forgiveness to him. And we went in and he was out of the hospital within three days for something that could have taken years of his life. And so that's the power of when you refute and reject curses and say no more, things happen that are huge in the spirit. So most of what we're talking about is just you having power over your tongue, you paying attention to the words that are coming out of your mouth. Now, I don't think just by saying like, that's stupid, or, you know, I don't like that, that that's cursing. It really has to be in your heart and it has to be an intended thought. If you're just joking around, someone's sarcasm, these kinds of things aren't cursing, but they could be from a place of woundedness that can turn into a perpetual place of cursing. So I love sarcasm. I don't like it when it hurts people. I love when people are joking around, but I don't like it when it's rooted in something inside. And so pay attention to if your sarcasm or your joking might have some truth in it, because that can even be unintended curses that you say over yourself. Like, I'm not a good singer, I'm terrible. I'm the one, or I have a face for radio or whatever it is. You say those enough and it's actually coming from inside and you're cursing yourself and maybe part of your destiny. And you wanna make sure that you are walking in your fullness and you give yourself the full opportunity to manifest anything God has for you. So I hope this was helpful. I wanna encourage you to pray and break off anything that you feel you've come into alignment with and anything that somebody might've said against you that's just, that's illegal, you just refute it, you, you reverse it, you cancel it. You say, in Jesus' name, I break that. Even words, maybe you went to a psychic or an astrologer or whatever, just say, I reject their words, I break it off my life right now in the name of Jesus. And he's so powerful to lead you and he's so powerful to bless you. So receive the blessing. If you're liking these videos, make sure to subscribe and also add comments over, over time. Maybe you felt cursed or share your story or maybe you're going through something and we'll pray with you in the bottom of the comment section. Thanks for watching.